Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the commandlet called get variable. The reason why you'd actually want to use the get variable is honestly, if you're trying to create a script and you want to see the exact output of a bunch of different variables on your screen, just to kind of troubleshoot why you might not be going into a certain if statement, or if you're doing a switch case, you want to know why it's not going to the case that you might expect it to go to, or just you want to see all the variables you might have forgotten what one variable might be assigned to because it's you have a long script and it's at the top of your script. You don't necessarily want to have to scroll up and down all the time to see what all your variables that you have set. You can definitely use get variable for it. We're, so we're going to show you what get variable is just in the terminal. And then I'm actually going to go in to a very simple script on how you would actually use this in like a real life use case. So if we just do the get variable commandlet as is right now, even if you don't create any variables, you're going to get the default set of variables in PowerShell. So you're going to see what your error action preference is. We see here for me, it is set to continue. The debug preference is set to silently continue. Continue. The confirm preference is set to high. Uh, the error view is set to concise. Our home is our user's administrator. Um, and then we can see our maximum history count as well. Our output encoding, where our profile is. Now we do remember we saw profile in just the last video there. Uh, we can see where our PS script root is as well. And then we can even see true and false here because true and false are actually variables. So we can see what those are equal to as well. Um, so there are a bunch of different things that you can actually take a look at. And you'll even see is Linux, is Mac OS, is Windows. So you'll see that those are actually assigned values as well. You're also going to see here that I actually even have test here that's equal to hello. So let's go ahead and let's actually just create a new variable here. Let's call it Jack here. And we're just going to make it equal to a string. So we're just going to make it equal to a YouTube channel here. And then if we go ahead and run our get variable again, and we then look for the jacked variable, here it is. And there is the actual value of the variable. So what you can actually even do as well is do a get variable and then specify jacked. And that will actually only get you that one variable. But what you can even do is do an array of do jacked and test and we can actually get both of those variables as well so you can supply a bunch of variables so this could be really really useful for troubleshooting if you don't know what a bunch of different variables are you can easily look that up and one of the really really good use cases are um, let's just say let's do a user age equals 19. we're going to say user name is equal John Doe. And we're going to say user um, job is equal to programmer. Now, if you have a common naming convention on your variables as well, what you can even do is do a get variable and then do a user star. And what this will actually do, we'll get any variables that start with the word user. So here we get user age, user job, and username. So if you were assigning these at very different parts of your script, instead of having to scroll up and down, you can simply do the get variable. Or if you're in a terminal window, if you've been working in here for a while, you've been creating a lot of variables, what you can just do is do a get variable and see all the different variables that you actually have in your system to make sure that the value is what you would actually expect it to be before you go ahead and use it. So if we actually go ahead and we minimize the terminal window here and we have this script in Visual Studio Code. So we have um, the script name, uh, which is just a nice little default string here, just so we can look it up. And then we also have a user object. Now, instead of getting this from AD, just to keep the example very, very simple, 
just created a nice custom object with the name of John Doe. We stored its birth year and also the job as well. And then we're getting the current date. We also have a user message, which is going to be blank at first. And then based on the user's age. So here we actually just get the approximate age here. We're just going to say if the date dot year minus user dot birth year dot year. Now, of course, you can do a time span to get the exact age of the user. We're just doing a, a very, very general idea. If the user is turning 18 this year, that is perfectly fine. So we can even change the wording here is going to be at least 18 years of age this year. And we can just change this message here is not going to be and then our final variable set is just user can vote is either going to be true or false now of course to actually vote you would your birth date would actually have to pass and you have to calculate the time span but this is just a very very simple script just to give you guys a very good idea of what's going on so what we can actually do here is if we just hit run everything runs and now let's go ahead and let's see what our user message is. We can see that it is user is going to be at least 18 years of age. Now what you could easily do, you can easily say that we can also type in all of these variables, but that can get quite long, especially if you have a lot of variables. So what I would do is right at the end here, we can do a get variable and then use our user star, same as our example in the terminal. And if we run that, there we go. So we have all of our variables here. So we can actually see the user. We can actually see the full blown value here. We can see the name, the birth year as well. And then we can see true. And we can even do out grid view here. And that should actually give us a little bit of a nicer View here might just take a few minutes and there it is so we can actually see I know this is going to be a little bit hard to see I should be able to zoom in here a little bit for you guys let me just fix this up so here we can actually see the user uh, name the birth year and the job user can vote and then the user message currently right now um, so let me just go back into this view here so what you can actually even do as well is let's say we wanted to see what the variables are at here. So we can actually just say user star at line 12. And now if we go ahead and we run this, we can actually see that the user message goes from blank to user is going to be at least 18 years of age. So you can easily have this with maybe some right outputs at the end. Um, like if we did a right output here and just did end script and we run this here, we can see our end script and we can see what our values are at here. You can even add like a little debug message here right before your get variable to see what it is really equal. And that will just really, really help you out. And if you really wanted to, even in Visual Studio Code, you can do a get variable here. And that will actually get you all the different variables that are in your Visual Studio uh, session as well. Now, of course, if you end the session and restart it, your get variables will be blank. Uh, so just be aware that this is only the variables in the current session. So if you haven't ran your script yet, you won't see what the variables are equal. They do actually have to run. So let's say we wanted to maybe make a mistake here and we did a less than 18. Um, here, this is where we would easily be able to find out that false that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense especially if we did as an example here 
um, we did user. Let's add one more variable here. User age approx because we know that it's not the exact age here that we're going to be getting. And if we're storing that there and we're going to store that here as well, let's go ahead and let's run that here. We're going to see the user age approximately is 34, but my message is saying that the user is not going to be at least 18 age of, uh, of age. And we can see here it's because I have a mistake. So the get variable could be quite handy to see exactly maybe why you're not getting the expected results. It might just kind of help pinpoint where exactly it might be happening. So if you put a bunch of these get variables, again, the longer the script, the kind of more useful that this will be because you can capture maybe exactly at what point that variable is changing values where it might be getting a value you're not actually expecting it to get based on your inputs. And that is really the get variable commandlet. If you guys have any commandlets that you guys would like me to look at in the next video, please let me know in the comment section down below. And please, if it comes in a different module, just let me know what module it comes in. And this way I can easily find it and make sure to mention that in the video. This way, a lot of people can benefit from those commandlets. Thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. Also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.